back and, well, at least in considering the first games of his career, better than ever. This was the best he's ever been in any first game of his career. 33 points in 24 minutes, 10 of 17 from the field, including three of five from three. Here he is after his debut. I thought I was terrible. Um, I got a lot to get back to um, just from my performance on defense um, and just for the flow of the game. Um, and then just, you know, I haven't had any time, you know, but just <clears throat> getting a feel for, the, for, the, for this speed, you know, in a long time. So, um, you know, it's just good to get this one under my belt. This was essentially like my first preseason game. So, you know, it's, it's a lot to take from this and, uh, you know, take it into the next game. Paul, one slight correction. You were not terrible. <laughs> you were actually very, very good. <laughs> what stood out to you, though, Rex, about his return? You know, it's funny. Yes, the numbers said, said he was great. I find that fascinating, though, because, you know, most people will look at that and say, well, you had 33 in, in the game. What well, are you talking about? But it was very about? efficient as well. I agree. But he wasn't even talking. He was pointing to his defense. Paul is a defensive-oriented guy. He takes a lot of pride in his defense. And when you haven't been out there with your teammates, you just don't ha- – you're not connected to them like you should be if you're practicing with them all the time. So for him to own that after a game, it, it says a lot about Paul. He's just a terrific player and, and I think maybe even as good a guy. Yeah. No Kawhi Leonard, no Patrick Beverly. Not only not in that one, but in this one as they take on the Atlanta Hawks either. So do you think we can expect to see similar numbers, Coach? Well, he's going to get a lot of touches again. They're going to run everything through him. I think it's good for him on the comeback trail to to be able to get himself into a rhythm. The tough part with the Clippers is now they're game 13 and they haven't played together yet. That's the tough part. And they haven't been able to win without Kawhi. You know, one of the things last year in Toronto – People don't realize they were doing all that load management. Toronto went 17-5 and five in the games that he set out. The Clippers are already 0-3 this year without Kawhi. It's going to be tougher to do the load management if they can't find a way to win without him. Paul George could certainly help him in that regard. Especially with the expectations being to be a title contender. Well, they are hosting the Atlanta Hawks in this one, and here's uh, Coach Lloyd Pierce just moments ago. Uh, I wish he was here, <laughs> more importantly. But no, Vince has been great. He's uh, he's a leader. He's a – I think when you have a young team of guys and we have a young team of guys, having an example in the locker room on and off the court at all times uh, is immeasurable. And Vince is a guy that carries himself with a very humble approach to everything he does. Um, and they see that every single day. All of our young guys see that. They respect that. Um, he's a leader in his own way. He does it. He does it different. He's not a barking. He's not barking at our young guys. He's not um, demonstrative in how he approaches and communicates with them. Um, but he just has his own way of communicating. He has his own way of leading, and he has his own way of being an example uh, of how to navigate through this uh, NBA profession. The players seem to relate to that pretty well. They love Vince. <laughs> we all love Vince. Um, like I said, he just he just does it his own way. He's a very humble person. You wouldn't know he's played 22 years in the guy that he is by how he approaches every single day, and I think there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, what, have you, what have you seen from Cam Reddish, uh, especially on the defensive end, in terms of his- just his length? You know, we we put him on the top perimeter player to start the games, and he's got great lateral quickness. He's got size and length to where every shot that he contests, he, he can impact and affect. Um, but he's got he's got instincts, and I'm trying to wind him up more and more with every game on offense and defense. Um, but he, he just has a good feel. He wants to deny. He wants to do a lot of the stuff that they were able to do at Duke, and I'm trying to educate him about, you know, you make mistakes at this level, you get punished. And so how do you keep the game in front? How do you how do you contain? How do you know tendencies of your matchup? He's going to match up against Paul tonight. And just understanding how to, you know, make it difficult is part of his education. But he's, he's a good defender. He's learning how to be an elite defender. He's learning how to use his skill set and, and apply that on the court. Coach, we got wind from Doc Rivers a little while ago that Kawhi won't be in the lineup tonight. How, and if so, how, how, if any, will that change your lineup and what your mission is tonight? <laughs> it's not going to change our lineup, but, uh, 
you know, it's one less weapon that they have, and it's one more opportunity for someone else to step up. Um, you know, I don't think they're going to miss a beat in terms of production. You know, Lou Will and, and Montrez are pretty pretty damn good in the pick and roll, and tough cover for anyone. Paul George in, in his first game had 33 and 24, and he said 24 minutes, and he said it was terrible. So. I hate to see what he thinks he can do tonight, uh, but they'll be all right with, with regardless of whoever they have on the court. Terrence Mann has played well. Um, they've got a, they've got enough options. Let's talk a little bit about his point guard, Trey Young, because that was a guy who, in the second half of last season, was in a neck-and-neck neck race for the Rookie of the Year award with Luka Doncic, somehow has become more efficient, more effective as a scorer this season. Rex. Yeah, an unbelievable player. I remember talking to Lloyd last summer after, after Summer League and when everyone was really, really down on Trey. He looks older now, too, right? Yeah, look at him. So now he looks a little <laughs> more hey, hey, Is he, it the sunglasses, though? He's got a, no, he's got a year under his belt of walking yeah. in in front of the camera. And yeah. he's strong. That's what it is. That's yep, true. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. that's Absolutely. true. You know what? That's he, true. He's a really good player and, and fantastic with the ball, clever. I don't know how you guard it. Again, we talked about this earlier tonight. I don't know how you guard these guys today when you can't touch them. No, touch it's them. really, really hard. When I talk to the older point guards, you know, Tim Hardaway was on my staff in Detroit. We talked. They all say, man, I would love to play <laughs> today oh, right? Isaiah, where we yes. can. He talks about it all the time. Yes. Oh my uh, God. You know, so, <laughs> you know, with these guys, it is. It's really hard. And that's why I think there's got to be more double teaming some of these guys, blitzing them on pick and roll, something to make him give the ball up. Because he's going to get shots and quality shots on anybody. When you're coaching a young team like this, though, Coach, and you're out in L.A., you're taking on a team with championship expectations, what do you tell your guys, especially defensively, as they take the floor against, given, no Kawhi Leonard and no Patrick Beverly, but still a guy like Paul George? Yeah, look, one of the things Lloyd Pierce has done, he's done a terrific job with this young team, impressing upon them the fact that they need to defend. And it has showed up in some really specific areas. They're in the top ten in the league now in giving up very few fast break points. They protect the paint there in the top 10 in the league. So they're getting the idea of not giving you easy shots, and yet they're still getting out and contesting threes, which puts them in the top 10 in opponents' three-point percentage. That's the basis of a solid defense with a young team and with John Collins out, one of his most talented guys. He's done a terrific job impressing up on them. And so tonight, you go do more of the same. You know, I think one thing with a young team, it's hard to really game plan and scheme a lot because they don't really know your base defense yet. He's trying to get them to understand their basic principles. Let's do it night after night after night after night. And then maybe we can make some changes to stop a guy like Paul George. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a look elsewhere around the league on this eight game Saturday night. As the Dallas Mavericks are beating the reigning champion Toronto Raptors. No Kawhi Leonard there either. <laughs> 40 to 31 in the second quarter. I'll go away. Earlier on NBA TV, Zach Levine and the Bulls hosting the Brooklyn Nets. And the first half would belong to the Bulls. Well, and also Joe Harris. Guys, here he is from three. Joe Harris getting it done all night long. Had a terrific game, efficient game, 35 minutes, 22 points. Shot the ball well. And it eight assists, of which we just saw one. Right. Kobe White sinking the three, then getting it done defensively, coast to coast for the dunk. This is how the Bulls got the lead at halftime with their great defense and Brooklyn turnovers because of the pressure. Why is Brook, Why is Chicago able to turn you over like they are right now? Well, they do a good job getting out in the passing lanes. You know, they blitz, pick and rolls, and, and they play hard. I mean, give them credit. He's got them playing a lot harder. Um, they're getting after you. But the fourth quarter would belong to the Brooklyn Nets. They outscored the Bulls 43-33 to in the fourth. And get this, guys. Spencer Dinwiddie had 20 of his 24 points in that fourth quarter as well. Chicago, though, determined to keep this thing alive. Markkinen, though, finishing with a double-double, 16 points and 10 rebounds, while Levine finished with 36. Tough shot right there by Markkinen. Caught it inside the line, stepped back out, and made it falling away. They were 9 for 39 from three on the game, but made four of them, I think, in the last <laughs> three minutes. Yeah. 
The Nets went at 117 to 111 behind a very balanced offensive effort every single one of those guys in double figure scoring. But for now, we're headed elsewhere on this eight game Saturday in the NBA as the Knicks have a 66 to 55 lead over the Hornets in the third quarter. Start of the telecast talking about Charlotte. If, if you ask hardcore fans who really watch the NBA, who's the leading scorer for the Hornets? I wonder how many would guess it's Devontae Graham. But he's their leading scorer and assist man. He's come off the bench in 10 of their 13 games, feet inside and a foul. That shouldn't happen. Knicks in his zone and someone posts inside. So not a good job by the defense. But look at him. He's, he's only 24. Now, when he was in high school, he's from, from Raleigh, North Carolina. He wasn't highly recruited. In fact, he committed to go to play at Appalachian State. And then his senior year, he was really good. Now, big school started to talk to him, and he went to Kansas and had an excellent career. You probably don't allow him back into North Carolina. State. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he played the G League last year, part of the season. Played in just 46 games as a rookie. And well, this year he's exploded. Yeah, you know, Smith Jr. Obviously North Carolina State. And again, it's all because of opportunity. This year, there's, there's no Kemba Walker. There's no Tony Parker. Washington breaking those free throws. And a moving screen is called. Two consecutive turnovers by Barry. Though. It's his first personal foul. See Barry a little disoriented. So the Knicks fluctuating between a man to man and the zone. Right now they're back into the man to man. Batum back up top to Graham. He looks up at the shot clock. Look how loosey goosey he is with the ball, Mike. That's yep. what you alluded to. Look how he's shaking. Gibson trying to poke it away. Shot clock winding down. Rogier gets away from Milikina, gets inside, back out Batum just as the shot clock expires. And Barrett the rebound. Dramatic action, but no points on the board. Turn it over the last two times and make it three consecutive times. B.J. Washington, good hand. Zeller running the floor, able to track it down. The tomb has it deflected. R.J. Barrett, good hustle there. <laughs> but then bad pass from Milikina. Marcus Morris was annoyed with him for that. Rogier head fake. Three-pointer misses. Tip by the rebound. Zeller comes down with it. Pass inside off the foot of Zeller. Somehow it gets back to him. Sloppy ball handling, a ball of confusion right now. He had to shoot that shot clock winding down. Yikes, that was an, <laughs> that was an ugly sequence. Knicks have turned it over three consecutive times. Barry, the culprit. Morris will try a three. That's good. Marcus Morris, two for three from downtown. His three-point shooting has been so good all season. Over 45% now. Last year, he shot a career. 69 to 55 as the Knicks have the lead. Marcus Morris leading the way with 12 points. Bobby Portis has added 12 as well. That with about five minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll take a look back there and elsewhere in the NBA as game time continues after the break. And here's more James Harden. You asked for James Harden. We're giving it to you. He shot the ball 23 times thus far. Pretty impressive. The Rockets are up 64 to 62 at the half.